When was the last time we did an episode on inner episode one? Is that when it was of season three? Okay, yeah, that was with Ethan. When Ethan was here, we did uh, Hollow Earth. But we're going back. We're going back inside the Earth. Yes, I'm about it. And we're gonna bring in Neil Armstrong, a father. Well, we're not talking about Neil's Neil. death. Also a father. Yeah, right? yeah. No, okay. we're gonna talk about Father Carlos Crespi and the artifacts he was given by the indigenous population of Ecuador that may have come from inner earth and that does sound pretty fascinating so if there's one thing i do know it will be dope oh my gosh <laughs> i don't ever remember saying that yeah well you said it so we got another inner earth episode coming your way i approve this message we'll see you on the inside you are now entering the realm of the freaky deaky an unsuspecting stop at the crossroads of fantasy and reality, where the frayed edges of make-believe seep into this cookie-cutter, white picket world you've been led to believe is far from extraordinary. What you're about to hear are true stories. <clears throat> Alleged true stories. Christian, just... <sighs> okay. Tales of the strange and inexplicable thought only to exist in film and folklore. Although difficult to accept, we do not know everything about this reality about time or space, what lies beneath the ocean's depths. And try though we might, the unchanging truth remains. There are some things we legitimately cannot explain logically. I don't remember ever saying that dope phrase. When I tell you I have like 50 to 60 random phrases that I think will be hilarious to use. I do say a lot of weird shit though. This is true. You do. Christian, before we get into it, let's tell our new listeners where they can find us or exactly what to do to help us grow the show. If you're a fan of the Freaky Deaky, do us a favor, leave us a five-star review. Because it seems like, I don't know if you've noticed, but people that aren't fans are very fond of leaving one-star reviews. We've been lucky enough not to get a ton of them, but it's still weird to me that people, like, if I don't like a show, I just move the hell on. But I'm not here to complain. It is, after all, my birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. I wish we would record, like, four episodes in one day, so, like, for, like, a month straight, I would people just open up to me and be like, it's my birthday. Like, Scott, how many of these you got, dude? Anyway. You have now journeyed into the past. Yeah. Welcome we, to Scott's birthday for the second week in a row. That's right. If you guys are wondering what I did, it was record. So, ta-da. Rate us five stars on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, if you would, or wherever you're listening. It really does help us grow the show. Another way you can help us grow the show is buy some of that sweet, sweet merch. we got some of the weirdest and most awesome paranormal merch items in our store at thefreakydeaky.com. If you have a story of your own that you want to share with the show, send it into the gang at thefreakydeaky.com. We love hearing from you guys. Otherwise, just comment on the socials. You know what they are, at Freaky Deaky Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and at TFD Paranormal on TikTok, if that's more your speed. Now, Christian, uh, how are you feeling this morning? I feel like a believer this morning. That's great news. Are you excited about the inner earth story that you're about to share with me and our listeners for the very first time? I am excited about it. Woohoo! Wow. No. <laughs> you can hear the excitement in his voice, folks. He's ready. Yes. We're going to start. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Father Carlos Crespi Croci, who was born in Mil Milan, Italy. You're not even going to take a name, like a minute to appreciate that name. Okay. Father Crespi Tros. What? Car Carlo Carlos Crespi Crosby. What was it? Father Carlos Crespi Croci. Father Crespi Crispy Cros. Yeah, give it's it. fine. You yeah. know what? Father Father Crespi. Like Crespi High School in California. Cro no idea what that is. Jim Croci. Wow. The singer. Oh, and I Carlos, thought you were making like a Jim Crow thing. I was like, no, interesting choice. No. Carlos, like Mencia, everyone's most hated comedian since he stole jokes. Yep, and got caught. That's right. It happens. It happens, folks. Don't but do it. This person was born in Milan, Italy in 1891, and he would later become a Salzian monk. The Salzians are a congregation named after St. Francis de Sales in 17th, a 17th century bishop of Geneva. You are correct. Yes. The Salzians charter describes the society's mission as the Christian... <sighs> Hold on. Forgot to get the water. I can read. <laughs> <Motherfucker. laughs> no, I don't have to cut anything whenever you mess up. I'll just... I can read. Asshole. Hey, you did this to yourself, man. I didn't make you say the words, okay? I'm not going to say any more words. Anyway, their charter 
describes the society's mission as the Christian perfection of its associates obtained by the exercise of spiritual and corporal works of charity towards the young, especially the poor, and the education of boys to priesthood. That's a lot. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I grasped maybe a couple of those words. Maybe. At most. Yeah. Father Crespi was not just a monk. He, he also had an OnlyFans. No. Yeah. He did. Psych. He, but he did only have some fans, so he had technically a bunch. not incorrect. He had a bunch of fans. He had been an educator, botanist, anthropologist, musician, but most importantly, a humanitarian. He opened an orphanage, set up many schools, brought electric lighting to the city, promoted the education of girls, and since he loves cinema, he hosted a weekly film festival. Okay, for people wondering at home exactly what abstinence will buy you, it's literally everything, apparently. Yeah. Don't focus on relationships, and you're bringing electricity to towns. Yep. And also doing every other thing in your free time. Shout out Father Crespi. Father Crespi was the man. He was highly respected by the indigenous tribes of Ecuador. They considered him a friend. Wow. He was assigned to a small Andean city of Cuenca, now, there's going to be some mispronunciations. I want everyone, while they're listening to this, to picture the music from Dos Equis, most interesting man in the world, playing underneath this. That's, that, that's all I hear is the Dos Equis commercial in my head. With everything you're saying that he does well, I'm like, this this is the true most interesting man in the world. Yeah, I expect you to make a, a, a video with that. He would spend 59 years doing his charitable... Well, let me finish that. Cuenca in uh, Ecuador in 1923. That's when he was assigned there. Gotcha. He would spend 59 years doing his charitable work until his death in 1982. Damn, I feel like a really bad person. I'm 33 now. I haven't done a single one of those things. Me neither. Almost a guarantee. Me neither. This dude spent almost 60 years doing this stuff. Yeah. And there's a statue of Father Crespi helping a child in the square in front of the church of Maria Oxaladora. Nailed it. The city of Cuenca is working with the Vatican to have him recognized as a saint. So he's someone that people could trust. Especially the indigenous people at the time. He is the most trusted man in the world. Right. <laughs> Which is to saying a lot, because when you hear some of the stories about some of these uh, religious people trying to convert different people across the world, the mm. heathens at the time, they weren't always... They weren't so very well, kind about yeah. it. So it's good to know that someone did go with love. Yep. And film. And film. A love for film. That's awesome, though. Yeah. A father. Welcome to a Father a Crespi's Film Festival. Yep. Once again, The Sound of Music. The Metal Library. Father Crespi's humanitarianism extended beyond Cuenca. The indigenous people of Eg Ed the indigenous the indigenous peoples of Ecuador. I can read began bringing him gifts from all over the country and even beyond. These gifts represented the works of most the indigenous cultures in Ecuador. One of the groups of indigenous people he, he became close with was the Shuar. The what? Shuar. Shuar? Yeah. This group, this was a group from deep within the jungles of Ecuador. He was dedicated to learning the various cultures of the area, and he would do this with this group by living in what we would call poverty, sleeping on the floors of their huts, covered only by a blanket and spiders and snakes, obviously, because he's in the jungle. Yeah, I don't know. You're not going to catch me anywhere near a jungle floor. Yeah, I've been there. I wouldn't sleep on the floor. The size, the size of those bugs out there? Hell no. Yeah. He was also the first to film this culture, the Schwar, in 1927. Dang. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy to think about a film festival in 1927. I think that came a little bit later, but... Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, but he was still, I mean, brought electricity to Cuenca. <laughs> yeah. God, you'd hear like every single sound. There'd be no sound in those films. No, no. <laughs> the Schwar re respected him so much that they began giving him fascinating artifacts. Some of the artifacts were gold and ancient in appearance. That is fascinating. Yeah. Father Crespi was not interested in the wealth. He recognized the preciousness of the gifts and was happy that, you know, mm. the people would find it important enough to give them. And yeah. he would try to give them something in exchange so that, like, they weren't giving it to him for free. It was like. Yeah. He's like, thank you for this gold. Here is a banana leaf. And they're like, tremendous exchange. Thank but, you. But from my understanding, the people were so so happy to see how excited he was when they gave him stuff. They would just keep giving him stuff. Maybe that's the, the key right there. That's how you get stuff. You're just excited about it. I mean, that is part of gift giving, is, is receiving. Gift giving. 
and receiving. Pe- yeah. So these ga- golden artifacts, golden ar- artifacts that had odd markings that seemed ancient, which also appealed to its anthropological interest, and again, of course, made him very happy. I imagine I'd probably be pretty happy if I got gold. Yep, exactly. Especially but this is great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just just a a a, a priest that's out here priesting. Yeah, doing the poverty thing. Passed into the spiritual realm for a second. And that happens when you hit your head really hard. They continue to bring more gifts, including jewelry, pottery, statues of animals and gods, and oversized rectangular metal plates. However, the vast majority of these metal plates were fake, with crude depictions by untrained indigenous people, including recognizable symbols, wildlife, and architecture, all with a clear modern Equatorian origin. So despite this, a small subset of these plates seem to be authentic, made of gold and far more complex. As an educated anthropologist, Father Crespi noted that certain depictions and sim- symbols were completely different from what was expected in this region, perhaps even in the Western Hemisphere. And this is, this became known as the Metal Library, as we mentioned earlier. What was the, the what library? The Metal Library. Metal, like it was made out of metal. Yes. Gotcha. The discovery made him realize there was something very off about some of these gifts. The golden tablets that Father Crespi received from the Equatorian tribe showed similarities to ancient Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Egyptian, and Far East Asian cultures, but also had unrecognizable written language. That is pretty curious. It is. The artifacts were found by the tribe underground in a cave in the Equatorian jungle. That's where they kept them, or that's what the people said they found them? That's where the people found them. Weird. Man, the world is crazy, Christian. It is There's crazy. a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't heard this story about, I've heard of inner earth stories, but not mm. this one before from Ecuador. Yeah, yeah this ain't the ant people. No, not this time, but maybe related. Maybe, yeah, maybe possibly. So Father Crespi acquired more than 50,000 objects, including what we already talked about what he got. He stored the artifacts at the courtyard of Maria Axia Dora Church until he was granted permission to start a museum. Did the Vatican ever come and claim the artifacts and hide them away forever? They gave him permission to start the museum. Oh. And we'll get back to the Vatican later. I bet we will. Until the 1960s, Father Crosby's collection was the largest museum in Ecuador and attracted countless visitors, including university and church officials, archaeologists, anthropologists, and politicians. The American explorer Richard Richard the, the who now? The American explorer Richard Wingate described the collections as the most valuable archaeological treasure on Earth and noted the artifacts' perfect workmanship and beauty. Crespi believed that some of the artifacts. Artifacts were genuine and suggested that they may be antediluvian, so originating before the biblical flood. Oh, wow. Which should be impossible. But here we are. In the New World. He also noted clear motifs from multiple ancient cultures, which the indigenous people would have had little to no knowledge of and therefore couldn't have faked. Where's your head going so far? Some Indiana Jones type shit. You it know? does feel like yeah, that, it's right? It's got a weird Jones vibe. Next, we're going to have the Holy Grail. That's right. So we got some theories for you. That sounds terrific. What will you say about these theories? It will be dope. It will be. <laughs> will be dope. We're going to talk about the Pope. That's as far as I got on that little ditty. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you refer to it as a little ditty. <laughs> You're aging yourself. That's before my time, actually, but I did hear that. The opinions of those who believe the metal plates were made by ancient Assyrian Egyptian, Chinese, or African people in Ecuador 4,000 years ago go against the mainstream view of history. Many people relate the metal plates to ancient alien theory, which suggests that extra, extraterrestrials were the ancestors or leaders of the first great civilizations. The ancient aliens theory proposes that these aliens passed on elements of their culture to Mesopotamian, Egyptians, Chinese, Mayans, and other ancient cultures, which would explain the similarities between the mythologies and tradition. And so the mix of cultures shown in the metal plates could be a result of them being being made by either aliens or one of the original peoples of the earth. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. And then we're going to bring in another infamous person in this, in the realm of uh, our podcast and other podcasts like this, Eric Von Doniken. Actually, Eric Von Daniken. You know the name, right? I know the name. He's basically wrote the original books talking about ancient aliens and all that stuff. 
lot of it's been been debunked now because they say that he read the the ancient languages wrong. He interpreted Mm -hmm. them. I think it was Sumerian. But he wrote the book, Gold of the Gods. And that that helped to make Father Crespi's theories or Father Crespi's um, artifacts famous and connected them to ancient alien theories. Oh, so he wrote this this book about this dude. Yeah. Gotcha. One of his, and I believe it was one of his early books, maybe in the 60s. Wouldn't it suck to like dedicate your entire life to something and then everyone near the end of, is just like, oh, it turns out that's wrong. Your theories are all false. I mean, that's the case, but he's still on some of the more recent episodes of the Ancient Aliens series. Mm. So he's doing okay still. He's written a bunch of books. They still sell dis- decently. There is an alter- alternative theory that suggests the artifacts came from a mysterious cave system somewhere far off in the Amazon jungles. Legends of the gods building vast underground cities are found in many ancient civilizations from Egypt to India to China. And we also see it in the United States with certain Native American cultures saying that they came from underground. The hidden world spoken of by the ancients may not be completely independent of one another and could be connected. So basically what they're saying is all these caves and tunnels and stuff mm. connect underground to other countries. So people in like the middle all over the world. Yeah. There's... So you, you could go to you could be in China and go underground and end up in the United States or in Central America or in South America. Or you could that end up in the Middle so, East. Wouldn't that be such a long trek like yeah how long would you be inside these tunnels man like it would how, be a how while roomy are these tunnels it would be a while but i mean theoretically if, like, if don't it was, worry guys we're just gonna walk in this tunnel for three years i mean if it was safe and you could carry food or hunt, find food down there i mean you could Ooh, do it like beetles i mean there's fish gather around children we found the beetles there's there's fish at wait you know in in some of those cave systems that have been there you know for, i guess since the ancient days yeah, I mean they're not agent, but they don't need they don't have eyes because it's too dark to see. So very easy to catch. Probably well, actually, maybe more difficult to catch. Right. Because you know, they can't see your bait. Maybe do they smell underwater? Christian, let's talk more about the anatomy of fish. This show is not about cave fish. Okay. It's about inner earth being connected. And Father Crespi mm, I finds, forgot that's where we started. Yeah. yeah, that took a really long, weird turn yeah, into fa- foods. Yeah, Father Crespi is getting these artifacts that are supposedly from China, Samaria, Mm. and Africa that should not be in Ecuador at this time period. Man, the plot thickens always. There's a tribe, and I don't really know how to say the name. It's something like Newhall, Newell Ataku. I could be way wrong. I can read. Yeah. They're from Central America, and they claim to have come from a subterranean ancestral home called Chico Mastin. Oh, it's in California. No. Chico. Yeah, Chico is, but maybe that, there's also a subterranean home. You didn't think about that? It, it's not called Chico Mostin. Uh-huh. Chico is just where one of the tunnels probably end up at the prison there. Nice. <laughs> so it has seven caves. And so these seven tribes. Try that without the hardest S I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Because something I, I put it on my note thing and my finger touches it and everything pops. I hate up. when that happens. Yeah. It's the worst. These seven tribes later form the Aztec Empire. North American tribes such as the Hopi, Zuni, Pawnee, and Creek also, it might, I don't know if that's Creek, but it could be Cree, mm. also share a similar story of emerging from the earth. The Inca believed their forefathers came from caves east of Cusco in Peru. Indigenous Brazilians claim their ancestors exited from a massive underground world while some stayed below the earth. The theory of a global underground network raises the possibility that the ancient peoples also left cultural relics in underground locations. And this may be the key to unlocking the mystery of the metal library found in Ecuador. What do you think about that like theory of the cave systems? Now, would that or would that not disprove everyone that thinks the world was once just one mass? Would it prove or disprove it? One one what? Like like Pangea and stuff like that. Like if there's a cave system, would that have happened like so much before the cave systems were made that i think the cave systems would probably be more recent but would they because i mean these are ancient people as well so how do we know they're not like the first humans as far as pangea goes i don't think there were humans then this bitch don't know about pangea that's (laughs) lil dicky right there who's oh that one isn't he the rapper yeah that that song is hilarious though it's his brain he's rapping with his brain his brain is rapping and he talks about pangea it's good stuff 
Deep cuts. Deep cuts. I would get the Pangea reference. You would, but the girl that he was seeing would not. It's because she can't read. Unlike yourself. I can read. Yeah. yeah. We know, Christian. We're very proud. This is when things go a little dark. That was a little demonic. Hey, it's a Catholic <laughs> church, right? Am I right? Oh my gosh. On July 19th, 1962, a fire broke out in Father Crespi's museum at about 1 a.m. Father Crespi managed to save many artifacts, but many more were destroyed. The fire also destroyed Cuenca's primary school, secondary school, and the cinema theater. The cause of the fire was inconclusive, but witnesses reported seeing two people with fuel canteens coming out of a car. Weird. It is weird. Why? I mean, you can't let people know about inner earth. <sighs> Man, this drives me. This reminds me of an episode I'm putting together on Men in Black and like UFO sightings and shit like that. It just drives me insane, man. It drives me nuts trying to figure that out. Just yeah. thinking about it. They're like, there's there is, even the possibility of people in the world that are trying to suppress this type of knowledge. There's so many questions. What's the reason for it? You mad? It's crazy, especially now because with all the, the UFO stuff coming out now, yeah. it's like, how is the government ever just going to come out and say what they know without saying, we've been lying to you? Yeah, we, there's no way. It's we've been like calling you. you people crazy yeah. to just so that you would, wouldn't know what's going on yeah. so we could distract you from our secret military stuff. You're so almost we, too far gone at this point. Yeah, like, it's You like, can't turn back and back. Just kidding. It's all real. And to be honest, at this point, and this goes for all the governments of the world, people don't trust you, so you might as well just tell the truth. Yeah, or we, do better and say that all the stuff's real and people don't trust you, so they wouldn't believe you. And then you solved your own problem. You know the secret in this case? Mm. I messed up. Yeah. That's that's how you fix things. It's not perfect, but, but neither are we. But anyway, that's a totally different episode. Now let me refine my place because obviously I touched this stupid app. Yeah, it seems like Christian, what happened over there? Passed into the spiritual realm for a second. And it was glorious. We're glad you enjoyed your stay. I saw Baba Yaga. So Father Crespi managed to save some of the some of the artifacts, mm. but many were destroyed. I already told you all that crap. Yeah, get all that crap out of here. Equatorian. Uh, like, did that is Do that I a have mis to push it, Christian? It says new new phytologist. That doesn't sound like a thing. I'm just gonna is that say Joe Rogan. I don't. Uh, I think it just put the he wrong seems word. Like he'd be a, a new phytologist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got to get it now. Mm. I get it. So Ecuadorian Jamie Rodriguez invested the case and concluded that unknown people robbed golden plates and set fire to the museum. Father Crespi relocated the surviving artifacts to his personal living quarters to protect them, and he guarded them for the next 15 years, and citizens provided support for security. No academic institution took the artifacts seriously, and no study was conducted. Father Crespi passed away on April 30th, 1982, at the age of 91. Many online articles suggest that the artifacts were stolen or disappeared after his death. But that's not the end of the story. Can you, can you read that last bit, but louder? It was very sensual. Not saying that that's a bad, it's a, it was a nice vibe, but it didn't come across the microphone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you feel good about that? Because I feel like... That was a little demonic. <laughs> oh god many articles suggest that the artifacts were stolen or disappeared after his death which is what anybody would That's say this happens yeah. if they want to get especially in a click you know bait age do like, you think like you know how wealthy people have like crazy auctions do you think any of these artifacts are like that? Like, you know, like some weird, like Ocean's Eleven type shit where- You know that that's the like truth. some jewelry heist, some art heist where it's like this rich person, quadrillionaire or whatever is like, I want this piece of gold that was found in inner earth. I used to think that like, that's so dumb. God, sorry, man. Touch the thing. I was trying to adjust it. Anyway, um, I used to think that was crazy that people would do that. But if I was really rich- it would be like having a, like an interesting, like you want interesting stuff around you. Yeah, know, I'm like, the type that doesn't need something to go sh show my friends. Look what I yeah. got. I'd be like, Ooh. I'd walk into my room and see that gold plate with Sumerian writing from Ecuador. And the and minor just know, deity that is safeguarding it. Yeah, Ku Klux Klan or whatever his name is. The Ku Klux Klan? No, Christian. No, I Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> I don't think that's them. Have okay. you not watched Black Panther Man? Yeah, Shaka Khan. The second one? Sure. You haven't watched it yet. Yeah.
On August 9th, 1979, three years before Father Crespi's death, the sale of the Crespi Museum was finalized to the Central Bank of Ecuador for a final price of 10, 10 million Ecuadorian sucres. What is that, like 24 bucks? I think it turns out to be like $400,000. That is not a lot. No. That is not a lot for that type of, you'd think, I mean. What, 1979 what, yeah, what, too, though. 79, yeah, it's probably like what, like $4 million to us now? No, I think that's, it's still what it, the 400000 is more of a recent. Oh, like estimation yeah gotcha but it's also ecuador and many of these were many of these artifacts weren't of value <laughs> part of the money from the sale was used to build a new public school in father crespi's name it should also be noted that father crespi ne never actually owned his collection or the museum they were all technically property of the roman catholic church who made the sale to the central bank of ecuador mm. father crespi himself was disappointed with the sale and was not even aware of it until it had already happened. He voiced his disappointment to a journalist from the daily newspaper El Tiempo. El Tiempo. Dun, 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 dun. The final sale documented states 6,500 pieces of the museum are recognized as legitimate and precious. The majority of the 50,000 artifacts bought by Crespi were fake, but the number of genuine pieces of 6,500 is still a lot. Yeah, that's still a decent amount. Yeah. The artifacts were not displayed, tested, or researched, which meant that Crespi's collection disappeared for 37 years. And then, it, yeah, in 2016, a team from Ancient Origins was given permission to view Crespi's collection held in the central bank, but a small sub subset of artifacts consisting of gold carvings, hieroglyphs, and Sumerian figures is missing. So the good stuff. Ten bucks says it's just in like Bill Gates bathroom or something like that. He has it next to a soap dish. Could be also in the Vatican. Yeah. Archives. Well, that was obvious, Christian. I didn't have to say that one. Yeah. Everyone immediately upon hearing that was like, oh, the Vatican. Huh? I mean, Bill Gates owns that now, but. Yeah. Outside no. of all that. <laughs> and if there's uh, one thing we can be sure of. Bill Gates that. is awesome. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa now. Triggered. Sorry. Christian. Trigger you gotta, warning. You got to chill out. That was a little demonic. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just some people. Myself included. Okay. So the missing artifacts include golden and silver plates, as well as certain stone and clay artifacts. And they could be rewrite, rewrite history if deemed authentic. Nothing rewrites history. Let's be honest. Everyone, they want history to sound exactly the way they tell it to us. Not a word different. But they want it to sound like we are submissive and go with the flow that the government shows us yeah but what do you think about that christian i approve this message yeah you would wouldn't you yep illuminate illuminati all the way there is a theory that the artifacts were retrieved from hueva de los teos a natural underground network located beneath the rainforest and it's covered in the covered eastern foothills of the andes that is known in english as the teos caves so if you're going to ecuador visit the teos caves yeah. Find Father Crespi's treasures. Wouldn't that be cool if one day we could do that? Yeah. If we could just the, you know, leave all work and necessity for... Would you go into a cave like that? Hell yeah. In Ecuador with spiders and snakes? Yeah, I would. I wouldn't enjoy it, but I think the curiosity would get to me. Yeah, you would have to. I'd, I'd need to know. I'd like, I'd get answers as soon as I enter the cave. <laughs> I'd walk in there like, it's all right, Scott, what you believe, it's true. You got to crawl through that little crevice you that's barely where, fit. That's where you'd lose me. And then swim through yeah. water. Let me be honest with everyone listening right now. Your boy does not have the body for spelunking, all right? It's not happening. I don't have the bravery for it. I don't have both. Yeah. And I also added in a bit of claustrophobia. So that's a potent mix for someone that... Yeah, I don't think I'm claustrophobic unless I'm in a cave crawling through those little tiny spots. like the, Eight inches wide. We could do it. Like, <laughs> like that, our episode on the moon shaft. I know, yeah, that I'm still like, gives no. me. Where the guy had to take off his clothes to get through and grease himself up. I'm like, no. Yeah, and we talked about all the injuries he probably sustained. Yeah. Yeah. The Teos Caves have been strictly guarded by the Shuar, who warn the cave system is inhabited by powerful spirits and consider it their sacred land. Now we're talking. The Shuar have been entering the Teos Caves for spiritual and ceremonial purposes for as long as they can remember, using mm -hmm. ladders made of vines through three known entrances, one which is well over 200 feet deep. Yeesh. Yeah. In 19 so, and walking down a vine ladder for 200 feet? Walking, climbing. 
descending. You know how I go down ladders, Christian. That's very presumptuous of you. Yeah. Maybe I walk down them. Like they do on, like in film where they have a rope going across the floor and they act like they're going sideways and they just turn the camera. Is that kind of walking? Yeah. Okay, I get or it. Or maybe on Chris Angel. Those are the two options. Mm, and not- I'm going to mind freak you, Christian? Or is it all a trick of the cameras? Must be a trick of the cameras. In 1976, a treasure hunter named Juan Moritz. Juan Moritz. Juan Moritz. Yeah, sounds like the, you sound like the guy from uh, Glorious Bastards trying to speak Italian. <laughs> Arriva Derci. Yeah. <laughs> he made an entry in his diary confirming that the caves were the dwelling of the Schwarz God, a supreme being praised by the first inhabitants of eastern Ecuador and their descendants. This God was the first shaman. I believe the name was Noon Kui. I could be saying that completely wrong. Noon Kui? Yeah, it was a shaman, also a woman, who became an almighty goddess after traveling deep into the caves. She created a lesser male god named Sunki, and together they birthed children and dogs who emerged out onto the surface. I'm sorry, they birthed the dogs? Yeah, you got the... I mean, I think that's basically saying... Created them. Yes. I will create dog. Because they're man's best friend. Yeah. Companion. Nuqui bestowed the shore people the right as the sole guardians of this place. And the the location of this lair is believed to be a large, luxurious room filled to the brim with golden gemstones within the caves, which is enormously, enormously vast and unmapped. Classic cave. And restrictive as- access only by threat of death. So in mid, the mid 1960s, Hungarian philologist, so a spelunker, I guess, and prospector, it's the same guy. In the 1960s, Moritz discovered a, a section of the cave that was clearly not natural, but man made, and discovered a secret chamber where he found a library of massive golden plates strung together with, into books each pressed with pictures and symbols. Morris, Moritz discovered the origin of Father Crespi's collections, which were pages from these golden books. He had to proceed with the utmost caution in particular. He needed to ensure that he had legal rights to the discovery, and for that he needed a trusted lawyer. Everybody trusts lawyers, right? You better call Saul. Yeah. He's the most trustworthy of them, isn't he? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Morris was introduced to a prominent lawyer from Ecuador's largest city named Guayaquil, a man named Gerardo Peña. And due to the necessary legal role he had to play, I think it's Gerardo Peña Materials. So Materials required Morris to show him the treasure trove. In June 1969, he wrote a detailed, they wrote a detailed description of the findings and submitted it to the Ecuadorian government, expecting to be met with a team or resources for an expedition. Instead, they just stole everything and drove away. They never heard back. Hmm. Most of the artifacts were massive, particularly the metal books. So they, they needed uh, equipment and a larger team to get them out. So for the next several years, Moritz kept the discovery a secret. Kind of makes me feel like it's similar to that Grand Canyon story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit for sure. I get the feeling Moritz doesn't like Eric von Daniken because he accused him of lying about their supposed expedition together and stated that he had never seen the art- artifacts himself. Interesting. Der Spiegel, which is a German magazine, revealed that the entire story had come from a single conversation between Moritz and Daniken, and that Daniken had used archival photos of Moritz. So after sell- more than 5 million copies of Gold of the Gods had sold, he'd admit- Daniken admitted in an interview that he had embellished the story and used theatrical effects in his writing. Despite the contra- controversy surrounding their, spo- their supposed expedition, Daniken's book had become incredibly popular and brought Father Crespi's title caves to fame. So now we have another guy entering the story, a guy named Stanley Hall. Welcome to the story, Stanley Hall. Yes, he's a wealthy and enthusiastic Scottish civil engineer. He had been obsessed with the the implications of Fowler Crispies. That's how it spelled it. Fowler Crispies? Yeah. You were thinking about fried chicken at a time like this, Christian? It's Father Crespi. Father Crespi's collection for years, but it was Daniken's book that inspired him to make Finding the Metal Library his life mission. Mission In 1973, Hall led a success, 
successful archaeological survey of the calendar stone circles in Scotland. In 1976, Halt organized an international expedition to Ecuador with 120 members, including British and Ecuadorian government and military officials, British special forces, leading scientists and spillologists. I don't think you should be able to call yourself a spillologist. That's just, that sounds way too sophisticated for what you're actually doing. You're yes. taking your shirt off and you're squeezing an eight inch sections of rock. That's sorry. You don't get a gist. All Some, right? Sometimes you have to tie knots. <laughs> Great. So do sailors. All right. Yeah. They also had an entire film crew and Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon who served as the expedition's honorary president. It's kind of fascinating. We're going to bring some NASA into this, right? Interesting. Armstrong joined the expedition because of his interest in in outer space and because Hall had links to the Armstrong clan and had mentioned the expedition in a, in a letter. Moritz was originally proposed to lead the expedition, but Hall, being a civil, an experienced civil engineer and project manager, refused as he was more capable of leading a successful F expedition of this magnitude. Moritz felt that he was the only one, he was certain that he was the only one capable of reaching the treasure and believed it would be impossible without him. Hmm. We can see some drama unfolding. In 1976, the Equatorian and British government signed an agreement to search for the treasure in the Teos Caves. Neil Armstrong was scheduled to again attend the expedition, but the expedition crew was warned by locals not to venture into the caves because they believed the Shuar tribe had been protecting a hidden subterranean civilization for hundreds of years. Classic. The Schwar tribe had gifted Father Crespi because of the love and respect they had for him. But the tribe saw Stanley Hall and his expedition team as outsiders and trespassers. The Schwar tribe became friendlier after meeting Neil Armstrong. <laughs> Interesting how huh? even they knew that he, was in, he walked on the moon. The expedition lasted 35 days, during which the team matched, mapped nearly 10 miles of cave system discovered over 300 new animal and insect species, and found man-made structures, tunnels, rooms, and ancient relics of great archaeological value. The expedition team found no treasure that resembled Father Crespi's collection, but they did find art artifacts dating back to 1500 BC, confirming that the caves had been frequented since ancient times. That's crazy, 1500 BC. That's what? before Christ. That's a long time. Before the Common Era. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that must be it, Christian. Oh, Christian. When you say it like that, oh, Christian. He's arguing about, sorry. Make me push one of these buttons. No, Christian, no, do you, it. You, you're do it. No more pushing buttons. One of the lead researchers voiced his frustration to a local Schwar elder who revealed to him that Hall's team had investigated the wrong cave and the real treasure was in a nearby but completely different cave system called the Cave of Higher Beings. Sorry, that's what it's called. I can read. That's not my word. <laughs> the Cave of Higher Beings. It's fine, Christian. Yeah. At this point, the beans is played out. It is. We get it, folks. Christian says beans. The Cave of Higher Entities. There you go. The Equatorian researcher... Manuel Palacios was, has criticized the concealment of reports, photographic and filmic evidence, and the denial of the real magnitude of this underground system. Ain't that some shit? Yeah. Some Ain't of the that some shit? Ain't that some shit? Some of the Schwar reported feeling used and scammed and believed the expedition members took something important from the Taos Caves. Of course they did. Yeah, what else are they going to do? They're from Europe. That's what oh, Christian, Europeans do. You racist. I mean, it's not yeah, racist. It, That's what Europeans oh, it's, have it's done not, it's, since the it's beginning. It's not racist if it's true. Is that what you're saying, Chris? Is that I what mean, you're getting at? Is that, do you want to? Haven't. Isn't that what, what we do? That's what we do, Christian. We have weird racist comments on a paranormal spooky ghost podcast. That's our jam. That's what the people come for. I approve this message. I knew you would. Okay, here we go. I found where I was at. The expedition report is shorter than what is expected from an undertaking with over 100 people and more than a month of nonstop exploration. There's speculation that the expedition findings were not as simple as they seem, and there is a focus on Neil Armstrong specifically among cult groups who have investigated the Metal Library mystery. In 1999, 1999, 1991, Stanley Hall found a man named Petrino, Petrino Hedemili. 
I don't know. Nailed it. Yeah. Who was the lawyer's secret source? Ah, we're going to skip that part. Oh, the, after a lawyer's secret source, man? Come on. What's that all about? What's the deal with this lawyer's secret source? Yeah. So anyway, this, this person, Petrino, agreed to show Stanley Hall the correct entrance to the metal library, which was not part of the Teos Caves, but another nearby cave system entirely that we spoke about. Petrino would only bring Stanley Hall there once. Trust Once trust was... Trust and com- camaraderie, camaraderie had developed between them and when the time was right. So during long, multiple long interviews and, and exchange of letters, Petrino revealed how he'd originally come to know the location of the metal lo- library. Petrino's uncle was a true friend of the Schwar elders and had offered them assistance. One day, the Schwar elders led him to the cave and guided him to their greatest treasure that they guarded for countless generations. They showed him their secret as a profound thank you and the greatest gesture of trust one could receive. However, this treasure did more than elicit elicit appreciation from Petrino. This treasure absolutely dumbfounded him. So Petrino was going to show his favorite nephew in 1946 when he was 17. His nephew imprinted his initials into the malleable gold of seven of the metal plates. What a douchebag. To leave evidence of his presence in the library. He claimed to have seen thousands of animal figures, cattle and horses, beetles, sparrowhawks, mastodons, reptiles, crocodiles, bullocks, bullocks, rams, ostriches, all on pedestals made of different stones of different colors, though he could not tell whether or not they were rubies, emeralds, diamonds, or sapphires because he knew nothing about precious stones. Dang. Did he know anything about color? I guess not. Hmm. We have a description of the chamber that this, this guy saw. A human skeleton with golden bones lying on a crystal bed purer than the purest water. I'm sorry, did you say golden bones? Yes. A human skeleton with golden bones. Yes, on a crystal bed. This is, are you sure this isn't like the script the next Indiana Jones movie? It might be. Figures of mythological creatures, half human and half animal in a third chamber. The figures included bodies with heads of hawks, horses with wings, birds with human arms and legs, Mm. hyenas with faces of princesses, spiders with faces of women, and donkeys with faces of men. So even then we were jackasses. Yeah, well, and the women were spiders. Wait, no, were they? What What was the spiders? Spiders had faces of women, but the hyenas were princesses. Yeah, what a weird look. Yeah. Not the hybrid you're looking for. These figures seem to be from the distant age of Osiris. I was actually wondering that myself. I was like, are these the distant age of Osiris? And you were like, Scott is so brilliant. That is a good one, though. That is a good one, yeah. Yeah. The chamber contained entire libraries full of heavy, voluminous books. The books were made of opaque yellow metal and appeared to be written by a single person in near perfect script. I don't know how, I guess all the writing would look alike if it was a single person. Yeah. There were no known symbols like crosses, circles, semicircles, squares, triangles, and stars, as well as mathematical formulas, geometrical figures. The language used in the books was unintelligible to the narrator. The bookshelves and furniture were covered in beaten gold with supports made of gold as well. That's like, not to reference Eiffel 65 in two episodes in a row, but it's like the rich version of Eiffel 65, you know, gold this house with a gold little window and a gold Corvette and everything you see is gold like him inside and outside. I'm not going to. So rich, rich, yeah. the rich are still the rich. Yeah. It's all the same. It wasn't any different in the past. Rich folks were like, yeah, put gold on my sofa. Yeah. And my toilet. Yeah. That I understand. And my toilet paper. And let's put it in our alcohol and called it golden shock schlager. Golden schlager. When was the last time you had a shot of gold schlager? Probably about 20, 15, 20 years, 10, 15, 20 years, probably like 20 years. So I think I was lived in California. Mm. There was an expedition planned. They planned to stay in Ecuador for three to four months. These were the, the guys that found all the Osiris style stuff. And they planned to involve the United Nations Agency, UNESCO, to legitimize their findings. Probably make it harder to steal. Probably, yes. In 1995, a short and violent war broke out between Ecuador and Peru, known as the Sinapa War. Which means the short and violent war. Does Is that what it means? I don't know, man. Yeah, man. I'm very intelligent. Okay. Nobody look it up. Just believe me. Trust you. Nobody check Wikipedia right now. Stop doing it. 
listen to the episode. It's not done. <laughs> Hall was forced to return to Scotland due to the dangerous political situation. In 1998, Hidalgo Meal, who was part of the expedition, was shot to death outside his home in Esmeraldas in what police called a robbery gone wrong. Many believe it was a targeted assassination. That would make more sense to yeah. me, yes. Hall continued to promote the story of the metal library beneath Ecuador until his death in 2008. Eileen Hall Munoz, who's Stanley Hall's daughter, now carries on her father's legacy and works in Ecuador as a co-director of the Tireless Project, a nonprofit organization that collaborates with NGOs, environmentalists, and local organizations towards a protected future for the Ecuadorian rainforest. Eileen has been living in the area for 12 years and still believes the metal library is somewhere beneath her feet. Geraldo Mateos, Morris Stanley's Hall's former lawyer, is still a vocal, vocal propon- proponent for his deceased client's discovery, but the location of the cave entrance is lost. Doesn't that just always happen? You would think something this important, people would remember where the cave entrance is. But, you know, in the, if only one or two people know, just an accident could make something lost forever. I mean, that used to happen in... In the ancient days? Yeah. Hmm. Like when you hear it, there's like something called Damascus steel. Yeah. They lost how to make that because whoever... Didn't they recently refigure that out? Right? I think they 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 either refigured it out or came pretty close. The expedition last... Wait, where the... Where are we? Every I can damn read. time. Every damn time. I hate... That's why I don't use this app for the, our shows. Sorry, you're too good for notes. It just messes me up. In 2017, in a 2017 interview with our, on your, I don't know what the fuck, in a 2000 interview with, with the magazine, Mateo stated that he is sure the Cave of Higher Beings with other <laughs> valuable <laughs> I like treasures. That. I like how like, you don't see it coming, and then after you read it, you have to pause for a second yeah. to look at me, make sure I also heard it. Yeah, whatever, man. And then just reiterate to yourself. I can read. I'm traumatized. <laughs> With Man, other, has the well before you continue, has there been an episode in the recent like 25 where the words beings haven't come up? I know it seems like it's like every or every other episode, the word beings is pretty prevalent. Seems like the god of these entities mm. is torturing me and everybody else. It Any, does seem that way. Anyway, back to the 2017 interview. Yeah, I'm all I'm all for you. The cave of higher entities with other valuable treasures will be found sooner or later, but to discover the metal library depends on the mysterious inhabitants and the guardians of the underground world. Mm. Mateos believes that without their consent, it would be impossible to find the metal library. Those who still seek the treasure today do so with the utmost respect for the natural environment in the indigenous people. Eileen's hobby of sustainable treasure seeking is accompanied by a mission of conservation of these fragile ecosystems in native culture. Interesting. What do you think? Do you think this is real? Do you think that they lied? I think just based on my man, Father Crispy, Father Crispy Fowler, or whatever you said his name was, just on his reputation alone, that if he said these things happen, I would believe him. After all, he is the most interesting man in the world. Right. And I'm the most trustworthy. A lot. He was very well respected by a lot of indigenous people. So the question is, do you believe the story? I'm not sure I believe that there's cave systems connecting to other like parts the entire of the world. But maybe. Yeah, but here's the thing. How would they figure that out? Just by... Like th- this guy, like, it was if Father Crespi had discovered the caves or just random? I think the Schwar discovered the cave. Hmm. And they said it leads everywhere in the world. Yes. Okay, so it's not and like he actually like, walked 500 miles, then walked 500 more and discovered no. that the caves were indeed. And I think um, what they're trying to say is that this is why you find some of this, the Egyptian and Sumerian writing. Yes, of course. It's because they were brought from a cave system before the age of discovery and left in these caves as people migrated throughout the world, which would mean a, have a totally different meaning if it was true to how people got to the Americas. Do you think people that lived in the cave systems probably had like under underground? Do you think that they had like really low self-esteem? I, I think if there were people that lived in the cave systems, it was probably because it was dangerous above ground mm. and that drove them underground for a while. And then they were able to discover a thing. And then later on, they came, came out from underground in places yeah. like the United States where the Hopi talks about the ground people. Yes. 
and yeah. other cultures have talked about it. Yeah, I guess I just imagine they'd have really low self esteem because they don't. They're in the dark. No, because they're always being walked on. <laughs> ah. Oh God, where's that rim shot? Hold on a second. Not nearly as effective when I have to scroll three pages back. The listeners won't know that because uh, you'll cut it out. The magic of post production. Anyway, I would say it would be, would totally change. It would totally change the world if that was if these cave systems were true. Well, isn't it weird that you know, like even a lot of conspiracy theories and stuff feature some kind of cave system across the United States? So who's to say that uh, you know maybe we discovered the or the government discovered these things and was like, oh, we're going to use these and either like built them out or flushed them out or something, made them a little more sustainable for what we'd be using. Well, hopefully there were a lot of indigenous people not trusting the government, so they didn't tell them the entrance to the mm. major caves. Yeah, but knowing the government, they probably found them. They're probably looking, but I'm not sure they They're found them. They're just drilling them. their own down there. I guess it's fine. That's why they have Elon Musk. That's why they have Elon Musk. Someone's got to drill. Drill, baby, drill. Wow. But yeah. you'll you'll find some pictures of Father Crespi online, his video of the Schwar. And he looks like a old school Catholic priest. Big old beard. Oh, smile yeah. seemed like a nice guy like i said everybody in in this area loved him so yeah. he must have been doing something right yeah and if you're that type of person and you've lived your entire life doing like humanitarian stuff hum humanitarian sorry i didn't mean to make that sexist humanitarian <laughs> stuff and everything like that uh your reputation is pretty much what you go by you right. know like there's that's who you are that's your word you know so i can't imagine that he just randomly decide to make up all this weird shit yeah that would be strange and then with the fire maybe taking out some of it or yeah the the Which, weird stuff that you know people would want to keep that stuff secret yeah and to be honest maybe even the church would want to keep that stuff secret because it would oh, be really yeah. really hard to explain mm -hmm. and still keep the their the narrative way that they have of telling their story that would throw that in yeah. they'd have to rethink it and re -exp and explain it differently so they'd have to actually look into the good book and wouldn't that be an issue i mean that's what they do now they just kind of mm. change it to the to their beliefs according to a lot of people and that's any True. any religious group yeah that has a has their good book they kind of manipulate the leaders tend to man manipulate that book based on their wants and needs at the time and there's <laughs> a lot of bad people out there christian humans are humans humans gonna human yeah well, that's fine no, but I mean, just thinking about the the possibility of something like this being real, it gives me a lot of hope because I believe in a lot of weird stuff, Christian. And when anytime you can get a story that you're like, oh, this has a pretty nice backing to it. And it's as like wild as this one was. That's a score for the, the believers out there. I'll be going back to Inner Earths in not too long. I've, I've got a couple other stories that are fascinating, too. Yeah. So. And people we'll come do back enjoy those, yeah. Those are, I do love, they are very exciting episodes, the inner earth. Well, I still want to do one on the ant people. Got to figure that out. Maybe you can do that one. They just walk in a line. Yeah. Get a little stressed. Carry a lot of heavy stuff around. Yeah. yeah. And that sounds, that about wraps up the ant people episode. I guess it was over before it started. All hail the queen. Yeah. Off with their head. That's not the ant people. Just that the, is not, that's just the ants. That's just bug life. A bug's life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there's the reference you all were hoping to find in the Inner Earth episode, A Bug's Life. Anyway, it's a pretty fascinating story. Tell us what you think. Yeah, let yeah. us know. Let us know which part of Inner Earth you'd like us to go to next and what you think of all the Inner Earth theories. Yeah. Which one is the most plausible is what I'd like to know from other people. Yeah. Is it Hollow Earth? Is it Inner Earth civilizations that aren't from the Hollow Earth? Is it the ant people? Let us know wherever you're listening in on. Be sure to leave a, a review on all the pod platforms wherever you're listening. We're trying to get Spotify reviews over 100. That's a nice, tasty number that I'd like to reach. So if you're on Spotify, you want to do us a little favor, throw us a bone. Hit that five-star review. It helps us grow the show out. And we are, we've been gaining some traction in different areas. So we're trying to keep that going. We're getting that momentum going. We're going to keep it rolling. Uh, we haven't talked about it in a while, but... We're going to bypass summer break and we're just going to start going episodic. There's not going to be seasons. We're just going to do weekly. It's going to be a weekly show, no breaks. If something happens, we 
maybe if we get too drained or worn out, maybe we'll take a week off here and there. But for the most part, we're catching our stride. Have we take ever taken a week off? Yeah, we've taken a couple. That's weird. I know. Yeah, you don't remember them because we've been doing this for so long. Yeah. Must but, be summer, right? Yeah. It was at the end of summer last year. We took a couple weeks. Yeah, I don't like it when we do. Now that now yeah. I remember it, I'm like, I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, he just sits outside. It's raining, and he watches out the window with the rain fall, falling down, wishing he could talk about Bigfoot. And we're not trying to do that to Christian, all right? Yeah, so I think at episode 150, which is about eight or nine episodes away, we're just going to start going to episode numbers instead of seasons and all that stuff. So I guess that's good news for you guys, right? Yay! yay. I need to get a yay sound effect going, but it's all right. In there's ample time for that anyway uh find us on social media at freaky Deaky pod on facebook instagram and youtube at tft paranormal on tiktok and if you have a story of your own or you want to share a story or talk to us or anything like that or just need to say uh how you doing send it to gang at the we love hearing from you guys also we are opening the voicemail line to hear your guys thoughts on episodes and if you have like little short stories or whatever you want to share when we get voicemails from you guys we're just going to start playing them after episodes to kind of close things out and a little loosey-goosey you know i'm pretty sure i've talked about everything everything is over the end we'll see you next week christian do you have anything to add that was disappointing that truck wait no I like that sound effect. I'm going to add something. I'm just trying to think something. Christian, do you have anything to add? Scott is so brilliant. And? I feel like a believer this morning. That's great news. This this must be all AI. I would never say anything like that. Christian, you've literally said all of these. And to deny it, I think you could agree is... That was a little demonic. (laughs) I think you cut. I approve this message. Okay. (laughs) Unacceptable, man. Yeah. Go find some witchcraft for you. Is there anything you're proud of? I can read. I am proud of that. Okay, this episode has gotten so far off the rails. It's time for us to hit the old dusty trails. We'll see you next week right here on The Frinky Dinky. Scott is so brilliant. Boo. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to cut that out now. You should. And you're going to have a sound clip of you saying boo. (laughs) And whenever I say something, I'm just going to push that. 